Welcome to the Tom Ball Video Museum Series, Episode 5. In this episode, we're going to cover the draw knife and the axe. In order to cover one, we must cover the other. Not only we're going to cover this axe, but we're going to cover, cover the other axes that we have on display here. We're going to cover the fro, how to split some wood, how to use the, the, the shave horse, and we're going to show you exactly how to use this tool to make a handle for this axe. All these tools displayed on this workbench right now really work in conjunction together depending on the task at hand. These are the two tools that we're going to be focused on, on is this draw knife and this axe. However, I've got some of my collection here that, that we can use and demonstrate on with different types of draw knives, different styles of draw knives, some spoke shaves, uh, some axes and some axe handles and different axe handles that I made and created out of different types of wood. We have an ads here, we have a, a uh, hewing axe, and we have an axe here to actually cut logs down from round to square, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that today. So what was the draw knife actually used for, and how do you use it? Well, a draw knife is used to get stock down, rough stock out, so you can clean it up with another tool. Typically, you would, you would use the draw knife, and you would go to something like a spoke shave to clean it up. Depends on what you want is the level of accuracy uh, and beauty that you want to put into your piece. All this starts with a tree, a raw tree. Well, you have to start from someplace, and it would start with something like this. A log uh, that you would split off with, with using a fro, and you would cut this down with one of the axes, and then you would use a draw knife to refine it a little bit better and then you use a spoke shave to a little bit better and you'd use a little carving knife and you can make things like spoons any kind of thing chair legs runs on chairs all kinds of things you can use with this so let's start using this piece and let's split this down and we'll show you a basic way that we'll uh, use some of these tools and then we'll make an axe handle using this draw knife we'll sharpen it up a little bit we're not going to change it anyway we'll just sharpen up a little bit so it'll be easy for us to use and we'll make a handle for this axe before we get the draw knife and axe let's go ahead and cover how log cabins were made way 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 back in the day for hundreds of years they do something like this this is called a broad axe and you have a log say for example this you have a log and they would come in and they would cut notches into this log and then after they cut notches in the log they'd come back and they would cut those notches out and then it would start to become flat. Now this axe is skewed on purpose. You can see how this handle is made and how this this blade is a little bit off and how this handle is actually curved slightly a little bit. That's where you can actually get around the angle in the corner of the log and still cut because this is a small example these things will be a lot bigger and this broad axe will cut in there and this handle allows you to get and make that cut properly with this skewed handle right here this bent handle right here and how this this is offset so you can get in there and cut that and once this is cut you'll come back and cut those notches out now i made a little small model and if you come in with your, your broad axe and you start making these cuts, chop, 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 then you'll come in and then you'll get your axe and you'll start cutting those chop marks out. Again, you'll chop down. I'm just using the razor blade so you can get the idea. And once you cut these things down and you cut those cut marks out that you did, those, those chunks, you start cutting those out, then your log actually starts becoming flat. You start cutting all those out all those pieces that you came down with your broad axe and you'll start getting almost a one flat side onto your log. So basically you'll start getting a shape like this that's flat and then you'll come up and you'll hit it with your ads. So once you've got at least two sides cut with the broad axe you will use your pivot and you'll turn it and you'll use a tool like this this is called an ads and you'll come through with this ads and then you'll start to flatten those cuts that you took out. Now this is just an example so you can kind of see the process. But we're going to get to the, to the uh, axes in a minute. And the 
the jawline. See, see how it comes through. I gotta be really easy right now because I don't want to be, I want to be safe. But anyway, you'll come through with the ads and you'll start flattening that log. Now let's go back to the model. Now after the broad axe comes down, you rotate it, broad axe comes down, and then you can start to see that that will actually start taking a shape of a log. And when you go to a log cabin and you see these these marks in, in on the on the log cabin, that's the tools that you see is looking at is the ads and the broad axe coming through and leaving those marks on that wood. And they'll cut a little notch, little dovetail kind of thing, and then they'll start stacking these up to make the wall. So that's basically how do you, how you're going to use the broad axe and the ads. Well, where does the the draw knife come into? We have to use this someplace. Prior to doing a lot of this work that they did, they would come and they would scrape the bark off with some of these tools. Also, some of the larger tools, you would you would you would scrape off the bark and kind of shape your wood a little bit and you'd come and hit it with the axes like we just did. Also, to cut these notches, we'll use axes for that also. Now the reason why it's necessary to know how to make a log like this and, and, and the log cabin structure kind of thing, because all these tools are incorporated with each other. All these axes, they're made a little bit different. They're for different purposes, draw knives and all these kinds of things. So let's break it down a little bit. What happens if we need to make an axe handle like I did for this, okay? What happens if I need to make an axe handle for the one like this for the museum? Or an axe handle for the ones that I've already made? Well, we've got to split that wood off something. We want the straightest grain as possible. So just for example purposes, this isn't the straightest grain, but I'm gonna show you how to split a piece of wood using a fro, a, a, a real fro, it's about 1820s, 1850s fro. And we're gonna go ahead and split this down and we're gonna take a piece from it um, it would be, you know, for an axe handle such as this. So the idea behind a fro is really to cut shingles. That's how shingles were made with a fro. But it's really basically used to split wood. And you can split wood relatively easy with a fro. And it's just a piece of metal held onto a handle. This is a hand forged fro. It's, it's a really old fro. I was fortunate enough to pick this up. And this is the mallet for the fro. And the reason why you want to use a wooden mallet for a fro is because you don't want to damage the back of it. You don't want to start hitting with this hammer. I see sometimes, and it's life sometimes, someone hit this with a hammer. I'm not going to mess with it though. But you can see the mallet that's being used, how much that I've used this one. I made this fresh and I should have made this uh, from what I did. This is oak, which is okay, but it's, it's got spalting in it. So basically all I'm going to do, if I was going to make a handle, I'd come up to the pith of the wood, which is the, the, the middle of the wood. And I'll start making... Uh, a mark across and I'm going to dig the side of the fro into one side so I'm getting a bite on it and I'm going to hit it and I'm going to get a bite on the other side, hit it on the other side of the fro and I'm going to start coming down with it to split this wood with this fro. Now I can control the split. Now this one's already split all the way through. But if you had a riving brake, and a riving brake is something that would hold this piece, just two pieces of wood on the ground, that you could twist and turn this. Now I can turn this handle, and I can split this apart. Now, uh, like I said, this isn't the straightest grain, but you'll get the idea. So now I can start using the axe to get this down enough to use the, um, the draw knife. So let's go ahead and start using the axe to draw this down a little bit. So I want to make a spoon like this from a stock like this. Well, I have to remove material and I want to remove material as fast as I possibly can. So one way to do that is what we use as an ax again, but this is a hewing ax. And this hewing ax is made crooked on purpose, it's sideways on purpose. You can notice how this ax is just slightly askewed. One side is beveled, the other side of it's flat. This is referred to me because I'm right-handed. You can use it right or left-handed, but I'm going to show you the difference. So if I turn this around this way and I'm right-handed and I'm cutting with this axe in this fashion like this, the flat part of the axe will go up against my workpiece. The curved part is out and away from me. That way I can get as close as up to here and I can get a bite on my workpiece. If I was left-handed, all I would do is take this axe head 
take it off and flip it around and put it the other way, you know, flip it and it'll be oriented the other way and I can use my left hand. Now if I were going to start making this spoon, I would use my hewing axe and I'd make a series of cuts into my piece and I would cut all those pieces off together. Then I would turn it, make a series of cuts, take them all down. Turn it, make a series of cuts, take all those down. Now picture this being the handle of the spoon that I'm making. I know it's kind of big for this example, but it'll work. Take it down. Now you can see I'm almost got it squared off as a cant, which is a square piece of wood or a billet. Right? See, I'll take this corner down. So now you can see I can use the axe to get a lot of the material away. Now let's move over and get into the um, jaw knife. Another use for, um, for hewing would be, for example, this drawer that I made. This, this is hewn down so it would fit in this groove that runs around this drawer for the panel, for the bottom panel, and it's also in two pieces. One is in two pieces because that's all I had and I had to make it from two pieces. Um, but the reason why you want to not glue this in and have it uh, kind of move around a little bit is so this can expand. So you'll actually hew this. Now I hewed that down and then I planed it. And this is how the drawer, uh, uh, traditional drawers are made. And with the hand cut dovetails on here, uh, this drawer should last a long time. It goes into a Queen Anne piece that I made. Uh, that's another use for um, hewing. There's, there's three different examples of draw knives here. This is the museums, and these are from my personal collection. I've used both of these. This is my first one. Don't particularly care for it, and I'll show you why. This is the second one that I've got. This is uh, made by hand. This is forged. Somebody put it in fire and forged in it. So is the museum one is forged. Now look at the difference between these. This blade is almost completely flat to the handle. You notice the handles aren't curved at all, right? They're almost flat. Look at the one from the museum, how the handles are, are offset from that blade a little bit. Look at the one that I've got, the other hand forged one, the same thing, the handles are curved a little bit. See that, it, it'll bite into the wood. And what that allows you to do, first of all, it's easier to pull across the wood, because if you've got your wood here and you're pulling it, it wants to automatically dig into your workpiece that you're doing. It's, this you can and flex it easier with your wrist. We're going to get into application in a minute. It's easier to turn it with your wrist. This one is actually offset more than mine is. I'm excited to get this sharp so I can actually use it and to see this kind of angle on it. So I really don't care for the one that's flat. This is a more of a modern one. Still works, still functions, still super sharp. I just have it in my collection. This is my daily user, if you will, and I use this all the time. Let's go ahead and put this to use. And this one has a stamp of 1832 on it, and that's probably when it was made. So um, let's go ahead and use this. So this is a shave horse. This is an English style of the shave horse, which is different from the French style of the shave horse. This shave horse, from, from as far as I understand, uh, started to exist around the 18th century, kind of, late 16th century. Now, the French shave horse is a little bit different. This does not exist on, the, on, on it. To hold the work piece down on a, on, a, on a French version, you have something like this. this is, I'm using an example. It comes out through the, the stock here, and this will pivot back and forth, and this is referred to as a dumb head. This will be shaped a little bit differently, and you still have a foot pedal. It comes all the way through the bottom, and you push that foot pedal, and it comes down, and it'll clamp your piece of wood. And the whole objective of this whole device is just to basically hold wood. So, for example, this piece here that we did a little bit of hewing on, we would put it in here and we would um, adjust it. And now we can push on the foot pedal and this will tighten down and we can use the draw knife on this piece of wood to remove a lot of material. This is adjustable. It's got this little angled piece that goes underneath it for going uh, using uh, putting smaller stock in there so if it was small I could pop this I could move this up higher 
and they would do it would, I could cut a lot smaller stock in this if it was even smaller than that I would use an adapter this adapter would go in here and then I could use cut really small pieces with this Tubbo Museum has an example of this that's older than the one that I've got because this is basically brand new maybe two years old that I made made it exactly like it would have been done in the you know the 17th century or so um, it works exactly exactly the same let's go over the little parts and little the way that this thing is constructed and then we'll go ahead and start using the draw knife and then we'll get the museum's draw knife up and going so we can make an axe handle for their axe these parts that go across here in here at the bottom was made out of a cant or a billet just like this actually it came from a piece just like this and I hand hewn these down got it to fit into all my parts all the holes were drilled with an auger just like this this right here is black walnut this came from a friend of mine who gave me this piece and basically it was like this I had to flatten it out just a little bit with um, with the hand plane to make it a little bit a little bit flatter and to dimensionalize it you can see right here it was a little bit hewn there also I flattened this with the uh, with the hand plane similar to that I put the I put these little dowels in the legs so the legs wouldn't come out I don't want to um, go any deeper or put wedges in there because I want to be able to disassemble this thing. And this angle part right here is also black walnut. Uh, everything else is oak. There's just a dowel that comes, it goes to the back of that. So this becomes flexible and it moves and it's adjustable. And here's the foot peg that you would push to, to move it back and forth so you can cause pressure on your workpiece. So let's go ahead and put this, let's go ahead and get this set up. Put our work piece in there, do a couple swipes with the jaw knife, and we'll do that. We'll get in the spoke shave, and then we'll show you how this works, and then we'll go ahead and, and uh, sharpen up the museum's jaw knife and use it. Right, just for an example, we'll load this up, and I push down with my feet pedals, and we'll get the draw knife, and we'll start pulling the knife towards us and shaping this to whatever we want to shape it on. To turn my piece, it's very easy. I just release the pressure. I can turn it to, to whatever I want. If I need more room, I pull that wedge toward me and I can reclamp it with my feet and I can start drawing again. This stuff that I'm working on now is pecans. Really super hard stuff is good stuff. Now, this is the this is the one that I use with the with the uh, the blade a little bit angled from the handles. The one that's straight handled, the other ones, I find it just a little bit more difficult, difficult to control. This is the museum's piece, and it needs to be sharpened. It's not we're going to take a take a, a bite off of it, but you can tell just by how deep that angle is that it'll cut very, very, very nicely. So let's go ahead and sharpen this thing, get it ready to go. Let's put a new stock in here. Let's pick a let's pick a piece to uh, to cut to split and to start shaping the handle. For their axe. Now the back of these things need to be flat and the bevel is only on one side of these and there's a challenge with going to be sharpening this one because it this this was used so much you can actually see a wear mark where the user cut so much with this and they sharpen it so many times that it's got a little curve to it. So I think we'll have to be very delicate with this and we'll put it on the, the, the grinder to make it go a little bit faster to get rid of some of this really, really bad rust on it. I don't want to manipulate it in any way. I just want to sharpen it so the tool can be used and that's it. You can see right here where they were pulling this thing so many times that it's curved this, curved it actually quite a bit. And the back isn't exactly flat because it's worn out right in here where the use of the tool was mostly doing what they were doing so maybe making a bunch of chairs um, who knows what they were what the tool was used for but someone used it a lot this is a hand forged tool you can see where they folded the metal over and to make this in the fire so it's really a beautiful tool and we're going to be really careful we don't want to we don't want to manipulate this at all we just want to get it to function. We're not going to change. It's bent a little bit. That's fine. We're going to we're going to keep it the same. We're just going to put like a little edge right on here so we can use it to cut uh, cut the handle for the axe. So we're going to use Tom Museum's draw knife 
to make a handle for their axe. And then that's how we're going to do this. It's going to be a nice little pair. So these will go together. That's just how this thing is going to work. The only thing that I'm going to do is just barely hit the front of this thing so we can um, uh, get some, rid of some of this deep pitting. And that's it. We're not going to shape it. We're not going to do anything. We're just going to take that down. I'm not going to touch the back with an with electric tool, with a power tool. This is all going to be done by hand. Okay, we've got this. Uh, we've got this set up with our hold fast and our dogs, and I'm going to use uh, 250 uh, to start out with this with some water. And when I sharpen these things like this, I've hit my finger on on it after it's sharp, and I tell you what, it smarts. It'll cut you really, really good. I just want to get the back a little bit, you know, some of this rusting stuff off here. And we've got to be careful with this um, where it um, bevels down where the, so much use was on there. It's going to be challenging to get in there, but we got to kind of put pressure on one side of the stone to get in that one spot. And just keep working on it by hand. I don't want to put a machine on it because I want this as flat as it can the way it's supposed to. It is pitted, but this tool will work. So I'll do this for a while. And then um, make this flat. I brought it up to 1200 grit on the stone. That's as high as I've got. Um, I need to get a 16,000 and then put the strop on it. However, I do not have a 16,000. I will get one. See, now that burr is coming off. Now, this thing is really, 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 really sharp. I can see some markings on here. I'll have to ask the museum if they want me to expose those. There's one on the front also. Okay. A little bit of the leather stuck on there. That's scary sharp. Okay. So this, this tool is ready to be used. I believe there's a marking right here. I'm not sure. But this thing should be ready to go. Before we do a test cut, Let's see what I did to it. I did a what's called a secondary bevel. So the back of this, the back of this is flat, and the top of it's beveled. So the profile of the tool looks like this. It's flat and it's beveled, and then it goes to the rest of the tool, right? Secondary bevel is when it works looks like this. You have your bevel, and then you put another a little a little bevel on the very end of it. So this becomes easier to sharpen this whole profile. Every time you can just come and secondary it and then every now and again, you just have to reprofile this. So it's got a secondary bevel on there. So it should work, should stay sharp, should be easy to sharpen afterwards. The back is flat, so let's test it. Let's see what we got. Let's see, if we got axe handle stuff out of this. Okay. Let's look at this. We're going to go with this, and we're just going to go ahead and start shaping a little bit on the shape horse. And, um, and once we get it down a little bit uh, cleaner, we'll uh, draw a picture of the uh, axe handle on there and then shape it. I like the way this axe handle looks. So I'm going to get a basic shape, a curve from this. And then um, I'll draw it on here. And we'll start cutting it and shaping it with the draw knife. So that looks so that looks kind of cool. I like that. And it's, of course, you know, the axe handle's got to work, too. It's got to be ergonomically correct to, to strike wood with. So we'll just come in here and um, darken these lines up. And this, this comes up with curves. I'm going to curve that back. Use the same curve to curve it back to itself. Because this, is, this top was a lot bigger than, than, the, than, the, than the axe is. Maybe something like 
not that drastic. Maybe it'll go into the axe head here. Where's the axe head? So the axe head will go here. So if we go curve, well, no, we'll curve that back into it. So that is just barely wide enough for that. That's a big axe. So we'll go like this. So we'll go make a little baby curve there. If you want to choke up on it, you can hold it there. So that, so we'll put it like, so that's going to be our axe top, the top of the axe right here. So I normally will start, I'll, I'll get this down kind of sort of to the shape and then I'll start really focusing on getting, getting this, this, this done. Got a line right now. It's going to be on my side. That's the bottom part. And I just got to watch the grain because the grain is going to do some really crazy stuff. So I'm going to, I'm going to take a small cut, kind of see which way the grain goes. See, it's going to be peeling up. I got to be careful because I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, split up too high so I'll just reverse reverse my tool and I'll take it down because I've got to get this this arc um, carved out it's a pleasure to be able to use these tools from their museum it's an honor to do that it's uh, you know it's a great opportunity to, to use these these antique tools in the way in which they were meant to be used it's um, it's wonderful. I'm being really careful because I don't want my split to go too far. You know where it splits the wood. So I have to make sure that I control that grain. One way to do that is put what you call a stop cut, and then when you come back on it, that'll pop off. Let me introduce you to the spoke shave. A spoke shave basically is just a regular plane, just like you would you know the other ones that we covered in our in our tomball video series and it it it's used to make spokes it's used to make furniture handles uh legs for chairs all kinds of things and then once you get to the point where you you you've you've completed the task with the with the uh the jaw knife like we have we move into the spoke shave this is the oldest one that i actually own and it works beautifully there's nothing wrong with this spoke shave it it, it cuts just fine when I, do, when I adjust my spoke shave, I normally have the right side a heavier cut than the left side. So if I'm cutting, so I can do a light cut, and if I want a heavier cut, I move the tool this way, and it gives me a heavier cut. Move the tool this way, it gives me a lighter cut. So that's, it's very important that we, well, it's important. I don't, I don't know how to do this without a spoke shave. So what we're going to do now is since we've done, finished with the, basically finished with the draw line situation, down for the for the basic shape of this we're going to start we're going to start uh working on the head of this um so the axe will fit on top of this and this is the most challenging part for me to do anyway um the rest of this is just take some time the grain is really funky and and it's you can see all the cut marks in here that we've got from the tools uh, but we will clean all that up um this is the saw mark from the table saw remember we we, we went ahead and made another billet from the other one, but everything else is, is done with the, the, the other tools. So we're gonna clean this up, we're gonna shape it. But I wanna get this on first. I'll find my center line, I'm gonna draw the shape on here, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. So basically all I do is get the tool and make sure it's facing in the right direction. I just hold it up on top of it and I draw inside uh, with a pencil to, uh, to mark it. So I extend my lead out for my mechanical pencil so I can try to get in the corners the best that I can. It's really hard to do. So this will give me a starting point of kind of sort of how how uh, how to start shaping the end of this thing with the tool on there. I know that this is smaller than this actual hole is. I know that because I couldn't get my lead all the way in the corner. So when I start shaping this, and you can see that this this is actually isn't big enough. That's fine. We can we're going to fix that later. So we're going to start doing this with the uh, with the jaw knife, and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to put to get the final size to the top of this thing. So I've got it loaded in the machine, in the in the uh, 
shave horse, I can see on my side, I can see the lines. So I'm going to slowly pull uh, the grain off the end, end of it. Following, I can see the lines, so I can, I've got a reference point on my side. And I'm going to slowly work to that line. I'm not going to go completely to that line. And you can see how beautifully this angle handle works on this tool and why it was made that way. There we go. I'm going to turn it over. I don't have enough room. So you made it too tight. Now I can flip it. Put my wedge back in and we'll work on this side. Getting that closer to my line. I'm just doing doing and I'm slowly turning it. And you can see with the original, with the museum's uh, draw knife, you can see where it's wore out there. That's where it was used most. And that's where I'm using it. It's just naturally where it wants to go. All right. So we'll just keep working on this until we can get it to fit in there. And, uh, and then once we, get, once we can get the very front in there, it goes a little bit faster because you can mark it with the with the head itself. So I'm gonna keep working on this. So I'll finesse the, the front of it a little bit, just enough to uh, to get this axe head and set it on here. And I'll make a mark and uh, I'll show you how this will work. So I've got it so it'll fit just on the thing there. There it goes. So I'll get it started. And then now it's got to mark a line where it gets stuck. And I'll continue taking this down until I can get the whole head, axe head, down onto, onto it about that far. And we just keep doing that. And then we'll shape the handle. have it uh, all the way down um, not quiet but just getting there well maybe this is it look at there I need a little bit more sticking out than that um, so I'm gonna take it down just a tiny bit more and then um, and then we can finish the uh, the rest of the handle that's why you cut it long because of stuff like that so it's long so we can we have room to play so i'm going to get this axe handle down i mean the axe a little bit down more on the head and then we'll shake this and um this one will be complete well we got to sharpen it and whatnot so that looks awesome look at that that's beautiful it's gonna be nice now we have the head of the axe it'll go down as far as we need to with a little bit sticking out the top so we can wedge that so since that's done we've got to mark the center of this thing all the way around and we start using the jaw knife to go ahead and round the corners of it, just like this one. We did this one a long time ago. This is made of Osa's Orange. And same procedure, we're gonna mark the middle, start drawing off, draw, draw knife in it. So all I do is I use my finger gauge. I just hold the pencil and I use my finger to, to reference the side and I can follow the line. Now I'm gonna use the same side to reference. So I'm just gonna flip it and I got the same side and I'm gonna reference a line in the middle of the other side, keeping my finger gauge. And this will give me kind of a, a center line to work to. Also, I'm gonna do this side, so I'll kind of sort of find the middle, that's about it. Keep my finger gauge there, and then I'm gonna draw a line that I can work to with the draw knife and the spoke shave. I want it kind of dark so I can see it. From the referencing from the same side, so I'm just gonna flip my part over, keep my finger gauge the same so it'll go the same distance in. Draw a line.
Now we can spoke shave or uh, draw knife this to those points. Now we're going to take the corners off. Right in here, we're going to take all this off and it's going to start making this handle a lot thinner. Let's go ahead and load it up under the shave horse and get busy. Now with those lines we just drew on there, we're going to take this little triangle part out and we got to still kind of make sure which way the grain's going on this because we don't want to split it really bad. So it's kind of digging in, so I'll just flip my tool over and that's it. We'll just work, we'll just work this uh, corner. Just like this. I'm going to keep doing this until both these lines meet that I drew on there. Okay, I think we've got it roughed out. That's the roughed axe handle. So, looking good, looking good. Now that we're done using the, uh, the jaw knife on this and the axes and everything, we gotta come and, make, and, and refine it and we're gonna do everything else with the, uh, the spoke shave. So what we're gonna do, you see how it's kind of a triangle? We're gonna come down and we're gonna take this triangle down on both sides, not the long, this side here where the ax will go. We're gonna come down on these two sides right here and uh, start refining it a little bit and get the spoke shave going. Now I've got the right side set, remember, high. You know, take a lot off and the left side set shallow so I can move the tool back and forth. I want a shallow cut in here. I want a heavy cut, I go to the, to the right side of my tool. So here's a high spot. Use the heavy side, start rotating my tool down. Now I'm, I'm using the light side of my tool. This is a very easy shift in the tool to do that. And it looks like I'm fortunate I'm going with the grain here, which is nice, it's easy to do. This up here, the grain starts to shift. So, grain starts to shift. So I turn my tool around. The light, and easy. And you can see already how it's already starting to get that shape. So we have a lot of shape in the do with the spoke shave. Yeah, this isn't necessary, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, well, this is necessary. So you're gonna get some of these shavings that came off of it, and you're gonna burnish the surface of it to make it smooth. This'll uh, knock those fibers down. It's almost like really, uh, so you can already see the shine coming out of it. Um, burnishing the surface like sandpaper. Now this is a uh, card scraper, and I'm gonna come through with the card scraper. So you can see the burrs, the little shavings that are coming off with the card scraper, and um, Try to stay out of the way of the camera. You can make them get a sharp side. There we go. So that the little birds are coming off. And you can see, I'll just do this one spot. You burnish it, and you can see the shine coming out of it. I may hit it with a little sandpaper, uh, but basically the axe handle's finished. Um, we'll put the head on. All right, there we go. So. Came out really nice. There's tool marks in here. You can tell it was handmade. I did hit it with a little bit of sandpaper to kind of get that rough, rough kind of feel off of it. Um, I don't know if people will be touching this in the museum. I don't know how they're going to use it down there or just display it. So I wanted to get to that rough, rough stuff off. Somebody gets any splinters. But it looks cool. It, 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 it came out came out really, really well. I did just get off the phone with those guys at Tom Ball Museum, and they wanted me to go ahead and uh, wire brush the back head. I did that. And they also want me to mount this on here and put tongue oil on it. So I'm going to do all that for them real quick. I've cut the wedges already. Now we're just going to glue this in, set it, put tongue oil on it, let it dry. And this thing is 100% ready to go. And will be one beautiful axe. Let's put the wedge in. Super exciting. I like doing this part a lot.
All right. Here we go. All right. Wedge. I did a mahogany wedge just just so it would look cool, you know, um, be a different color. Okay, there we go. Get some nice tongue oil on this. Look how it changes that grain. Isn't that beautiful? We completed a really nice oak handle using an original draw knife. Next episode, something we haven't done before, we gotta cover a transitional plane.